What's up everybody, Jim here from Clockwork Industries. Welcome back to another quick rough cut video. Today I am working on building out my new fixture system. Well, at least the base of the fixture system. When I originally put the fixture in here, it was a quick mock-up. Well, not a mock-up, it, it was a mid-plate fixture or kind of like a secondary adapter fixture that would eventually be, be uh, installed on top of this fixture but I didn't have this material at the time, so I had the I had the adapter plate material, so I went ahead and just added that to the bed here and uh, waited on getting this piece of material. I've had it here for a little while now, I just haven't had time to pause production and go ahead and get this done, but I wanted to knock that out this weekend because I want to start, uh, I need to get it ready to be able to do uh, reservoirs and manifolds, so it became a higher priority. And uh, I ran into this issue here where the MX-1100 has an 11 by 18 work area, so that means with the way the bed is designed, it overhangs off the back, like if I'm doing a fixture that is a full work area, or full travel uh, work area uh, in dimension. So with 11 by 18, I'm getting, with a I'm cutting it with a quarter inch cutter, so I'm gonna have 10 and a quarter by 17, or 10 and three quarters by 17 and three quarters. So what happens here is, the fixture itself is gonna overhang off the back of the bed like an eighth inch and it's gonna overhang off the front of the bed by like an inch and a half or so, or maybe a little little under, an inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So what that puts me in this position where I don't have a, I don't have a good true surface to origin off of so I can get the screw holes in. Because what I'm gonna do is put in the screw holes and then clamp it down on top of like some parallels or maybe even one, two, three blocks. That way I can get the whole edge all the way around and then I'll drop it back down into place, indicate it in, and then it'll be all set. So what I'm doing here is I had to figure out where I'm gonna locate off because I had no good area because the edges are saw cut, they're not true, and I'm not gonna be able to get my screws in the right position so they actually go in between the uh, T-slots. So what I set up here is, let me bring you in here. You can do this with a Heimer too, but this edge here is in my 3D model. So what I'm able to do is run the probe off of this using something really rigid and straight. So I chose to use a parallel and I'm gonna back this off and, oh, and run this here. Okay, so what you wanna do is bring it all the way in, so you're at zero, zero, and come into here and zero everything out, your X and your Y. We'll get that lined up. All right, so then you can come up in here and you can see that it, from zero, zero, it went to 1.7229. Okay, so once you have that fixed reference point and the actual distance from your Z0 and the full um, travel to, in this case, 1.7229, I can take that dimension, go into my 3D model in Fusion 360 and input that uh, dimension into the, into the file, into the design side. So now I actually have my X reference is gonna be completely Z0 and then my Y reference will now be from that area on the T slot minus the 1.7229. So that gives you your fixed reference point and now I have the origin for going to be able to machine all the screws out for this fixture plate. So what I'm planning on doing is getting all the screws drilled and counterboard, then I'm gonna pick, take the fixture out and set it back down on some shim stock of some kind. I might just use some like eighth inch acrylic or um, I don't know, eighth inch acrylic, maybe one, two, three block. I don't know if I have any screws long enough to do that. Either way, I just wanna have it elevated so I can make a full, full depth pass all the way around, get my, my perimeter set out, and then I'll take those out, bolt it back down, indicate it in, and now the base fixture will be done. 
and the base fixture has four dowel pin holes so i'll be able to throw on my other adapter fixture that i was using previously which will let me go back and forth between cable management production on both machines but now i have what i needed this for in the first place which was getting ready for my manifold and reservoir production so first things first is going to be a celerity of reservoirs they'll have i need a much larger fixture uh, I'll be doing two 360s at a time, three 240s and six 120s. So that'll be really helpful compared to the way I was doing it before. And then having this bigger fixture with the full work area, I wouldn't be able to do custom manifolds or reservoirs without that. So I'll be able to take a piece of H high density polyethylene and basically have like a inexpensive plastic spoil board that I can just zap screws into and do custom one-off parts. That's really been one of the things I missed about the router is like, that kind of work holding scenario where if you just need to hold down a quick part really quick and you could just zap a couple screws in with clamps and you're good to go and you could leave some tabs or whatever especially when you just want to do something quick for the shop you don't have to go through for me i'd have to like either scrap one of my like i would have dummy fixtures where i could just screw into it and stuff like that uh i do have a vice setup that i'm going to be getting soon so that would be a little bit helpful for that kind of stuff but just a good old-fashioned just cheap plastic or i, I was using wood and I was using marine grade plywood from McMaster and it works, but over time, I feel like it helps build up like algae in your water and it like turns all the, the water starts turning tan and it's not, I don't know. I just felt like it almost contaminated the water a little bit. Not, not like to the point where it's unusable, but uh, I don't know. I just kind of felt that it'd be better to go with the plastic. That way I just have chips that I could throw out and not have to worry about it after that. So uh this week i'll have it all set up and ready to go i got some custom work coming up so that's going to be nice and i that's why i needed to pause production on this to get it out the door and get this thing all set up so uh other than that i think that's about it uh discord server is live there's a handful of people in there now sh sharing their builds and progress on that uh i'm going to be sharing i have a channel in there for fusion 360 tutorials which i'm going to be starting up on this channel uh contour combs are live on the website 15 percent off sales still in effect uh links for all that is down in the description um yeah so w and with the fusion 360 definitely plan on doing that and then i got the live streams i'm going to be doing another one this week and i'm still trying to iron out the format and then i do have a couple other people lined up that i'm going to be talking to for the uh jumping off of the podcast so uh be on the lookout for all that stuff all of that stuff will be over on the website i do plan on getting an audio only version for the podcast although talking to modders and people who are working on projects uh ideally you might want to watch it but it'll be up on youtube it'll be on my website and i will have an audio only version for people who are listening through headphones and stuff so uh a lot of stuff coming up for 2022 and uh stay tuned so subscribe and hit the bell because when you hit the bell you'll actually get a notification that's the only time I, on youtube when i actually get notifications when people go live is when i have the the bell rung so do me a favor and do that and uh we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching i appreciate it